and will come to code disclosed. This video explains principal component analysis as a dimensional reduction technique and its implementation on image compression. I will also write a very simple code to show you how the steps of this algorithm are applied on MATLAB. Let's first start by explaining what, the idea, what is the idea behind principal component analysis. So principal component analysis is, is a dimensionality reduction technique that aims to shine a light on data in such a way something coherent comes out of it. Um, actually, I, I really like the analogy between PCA and this, um, this pile of rubbish. If you uh, can look at this pile of rubbish, you can get ac actually zero information from it. You, can, you cannot see anything from it. But if you consider this pile of rubbish as data of many, many numbers and many, many features, if you apply PCA on it, it might give you a very a, a meaningful output out of it or a, a meaningful information out of this pile of data. So we can say that PCA or principal component analysis gives you a new coordinate system, a new coordinate system, um, uh, but based entirely on your data. And this coordinate system would be meaningful. It gives you uh, the, the most information about your data. Um, the principal component analysis has mainly five steps to apply. So this algorithm has only five steps. Uh, uh, it needs to be applied computationally in order for you to uh, reduce the dimensionality of your data set. When I say that reduce the dimensionality of your data set, I mean to reduce redundancy, to reduce the noise, to come up with the most important uh, features or the most important coordinates that actually explains what's going on or the actually uh, actually explains the dynamics of your data set. Um, and, and these coordinates should be a couple of coordinates, not the entire dimension of your data set. Let's show you what are the steps. So consider this is your data set. Um, and I'm going to take the general form where you have M rows and N columns and M doesn't equal to N. So they, your data set is not square. And this is the actual case um, in real life data set, actually. Um, so the very first step in this algorithm is to assemble your data set. So um, if you can consider this data set as an image, then each row is a pixel row. So you have X1, X2, X of M. And each row is uh, con contains pixels. Or you can consider this data set as people. So each row can uh, uh, represent a person and the columns represent features of these people. So for example, weight, height, um, uh, gender, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, As we are uh, trying to um, uh, implement this algorithm on an image compression in this video, I will consider this as an image. So um, the data set here is, I'm going to say it, um, I'm going to name it X, and the dimension of this data set is M times N. Um, so you only need to place these rows inside your data set. So the first row of your data set is X1. So X1, this is a row or a vector that has a dimension of, um, of uh, uh, 1 times N. So it has only one row and columns, and then only one row and columns. In, uh, as, a, as a whole, this data set has a dimension of m times n. Remember, this data set is noisy, um, has a lot of correlations between these uh, variables uh, that uh, uh, contribute to this data set. And our aim is to reduce or eliminate this noise. All right, so this is the very first step. Second step is to compute the average of all rows. So basically, you just sum of all, uh, you sum all, of, all of the rows and uh, divide by the uh, number of these rows. And I will call it x bar. So this is the second step. The third step is to build the mean centered data set. So I'm going to call this uh, data set, or I'm going to call this matrix, or it's, it's a data set, actually, um, psi. So psi here is x minus x bar. So your original data set minus X bar, which is the average of all rows. Basically, what I'm doing here is to shape my data set as a Gaussian, and the mean of this Gaussian is zero. That's it. Um, so um, in other words, so this is my data set now, and it has M by N dimension. And each, rows, each row now is Psi 1, Psi 2, Psi M. So each row is the data set minus the mean, data set minus the mean, and so on and so forth. 
Remember, I still have noisy data here. I haven't reached the step where uh, this noisiness is 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 um, uh, this noise is eliminated. All right. So um, uh, the fourth step here is to build the covariance matrix. So what's what's the covariance matrix? Is to take the uh, uh, the mean centered data, which uh, the data set which is psi, and then times by the psi transpose. So it's psi. Uh, it's that um, uh, it's m by n times n by m. So if you look at the dimensions here, here you have m by n because each uh, psi 1 here is a row vector, row vector, row vector, and then the transpose of those vectors is n times n. It ha they have the dimension of n times n. So if you take the multiplication of these two, you will end up with a covariance matrix that has the dimension of m times m. Now, let's zoom in to the meaning of this covariance matrix. So, first of all, it's psi times psi transpose. So, um, remember that this psi 1 is a vector that has um, a dimension of 1 times n. And the second one, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, multiplied by psi 1, the transpose here, which has the, uh, the dimension of n times 1. So, if you uh, multiply these two together, it's like doing the dot product. So you're multiplying two vectors, and if you multiply these two, you will end up with a number, basically. So let's do the, 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 the multiplication. So if you do the multiplication, you will end up with psi 1, psi 1, and then psi 1, psi 2, and then so on until you reach, uh, reach to psi 1, psi m. This is the first row. The second row is exactly the same thing. So you have psi 2, psi 1, and then psi 2, psi 2, and then psi 2, psi m. And you go through all the rows until you um, reach the final row, which is psi m, psi 1, until you end up with psi m, psi m. And that's why the covariance matrix has a dimension of m times m. Now, what do these elements mean? Now, the, co the, the diagonal elements here, they uh, represent the variance. Uh, of the uh, of the data set. So the variance is a measurement, it's a statistical measurement that uh, explains the spread of numbers in a data set. So basically if you if you if you can imagine um, uh, uh, um, a bell shape or a Gaussian uh, d distribution, the variance is how these data points uh, spread away from the mean. This is the variance. And the diagonal elements here um, uh, uh, represent the variance. However, the off-diagonal elements, the green elements here, they represent what we call covariance. Now, covariance is also a statistical measurement, but it shows you the correlation between two variables or how two random variables vary together. Now, remember, our aim here is to eliminate the noise eliminate the redundancy of, of, uh, uh, on our data set and just get the maximal variance of our data set. To do that, we need to make the covariance elements zero. If we make the covariance elements zero, we just make all the correlations, all the dependency zero. So we reduce the redundancy in this case, and we only get the maximal variance of this data set. All right, now how we do this? How can we do this? One way to do this is step number five, actually, which is diagonalize the covariance matrix. When I say diagonalize the covariance matrix or any other matrix, when you diagonalize it, it means you compute the eigenvalues and the eigenfunctions of this, of this matrix. So what I want to focus on here is the eigenvalues um, uh, matrix of the covariance matrix. So this is what it looks like. So I'm going to call it S, the covariance matrix. And this is what looks like to um, uh, when you compute it. You will end up with of diagonal elements all zero. And the diagonal elements, however, which is uh, sigma 1, sigma 2, all the way to sigma n, the dimension of this matrix, by the way, is m times m. It's exactly the same as the covariance matrix. So um, the interesting thing about these elements, these diagonal elements, is that First of all, they, these are variances. Sigma 1 is the variance, sigma 2 is a variance, sigma m is a variance. And also, they are ordered in a decreasing way, which means that this is the strongest or the biggest variance in this matrix, which holds most information about the system. And the last one, sigma n, is the smallest variance, which holds less information about the system. 
Now, practically speaking, M here could reach millions. So it's impractical to just uh, 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 include, for example, sigma M here, which could include, uh, which could uh, hold, I don't know, 0 0.001 of the information of the system. So usually we only take or we only we we truncate um, these eigenvalues to just hold, to just uh, maintain a couple of uh, these sigmas and ignore the rest. So the ones that I hold, um, uh, the ones that I keep, uh, maintain the most information about the system. And in this way, I get what I want um, uh, by getting the information, the, the important information that I need. And at the same time, and I reduce the, the noise of the system. And at the same time, I reduce the dimensionality of the system. I don't have to include all of the um, uh, the dimensions, which is M dimension. I don't have to include all of these um, components that hardly contribute to the to the to the information they hold to the system. I only take a couple of them, and the ones that I keep we call feature space. Now, um, just a very side note here: um, the the covariance matrix is a symmetric matrix, or what we call it, self-adjoint. This means that if you uh, calculate the eigenvalues matrix of this covariance matrix, all of the elements of this matrix are positive and real. Okay. Now, let's um, just do a recap of the uh, steps. Uh, of the PCA algorithm, um, just to uh, wrap up everything we have said before we go to MATLAB. So the first thing, the first step is to assemble and put together the data set. The second one is to compute the average of all the rows. Uh, the third step is to build the mean centered data set. The fourth row, uh, the first, uh, fourth step, sorry, is to build the covariance matrix. And the last step is to diagonalize the covariance matrix and look for the uh, eigenvalues that actually hold the most information and just ignore the rest that they, they, they can hardly um, have any. All right, so how can we um, code this in MATLAB, how we can code these steps in MATLAB? And the, the, the most important information here, how we can implement this in an image compression context. All right, so in this case, let's move to MATLAB and so I can show you how. So um, here I just, um, I have uh, an image of an arum lily. Um, uh, first of all, we need to read this image. We need to let MATLAB read this image. A way to do this is to use the im read uh, command. So I'm gonna call my uh, image a. So a equals im read uh, arum lily dot jpeg. Uh, I want to show this image. So to show this image, I'm going to uh, call it, um, call the command uh, image c. Um, and first of all, before I go into any steps, I'm going to show you the figure uh, or the, 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 the image. So this is the image. This is the room lily that I took using my phone, actually. Um, and I want to apply PCA on it. So um, let me show you how, um, how many rows and how many uh, columns. Um, so here, image dimensions. So I'm gonna call it NX, for example, for the size of uh, the, fir uh, the first size of A, which is the number of uh, rows, and NY is the second size of A, which is the number of columns. So, uh, so if I, so let me um, maybe comment these because they take long time to show, and I will run it again. Um, so if I run it again, you can see that NX has 4032, 4032 um, uh, uh, rows, and NY, you have 3024 column. So um, this is a huge data set. This is a huge image. So we want to reduce this uh, so we can um, uh, to reduce the uh, to to uh, uh, reduce the dimensionality of this uh, of this image by applying PCA. All right, so let's start uh, 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 step by step. So this is an, a colored image. In a way uh, that MATLAB um, treats images is that it's easier first to um, convert this image to a grayscale image because each image has three channels, each, uh, three colored channels, um, but instead of it's easier to, to uh, deal with images as a grayscale, 
rather than deal with the three images, uh, sorry, three channels of the colors. So to do this, um, so here I'm going to convert to gray scale. Uh, I'm going to call it X. So this is my data set now. Uh, so it's double. So double means uh, convert my image from being an image to a matrix, to, to, to a bunch of numbers, basically. Uh, so after uh, uh, double here, I'm going to R, G, B to gray of A. All right, so in this case, so we convert it to uh, grayscale, so here to double and, and grayscale, okay? All right, so um, this is my data set now. Um, and let's show it actually. So show the image, the grayscale image. So I'm going to say figure two, uh, and I'm going to use subplot for a reason. You're gonna see what's the reason in a minute. And I'm going to say uh, images C of X, um, and the title here, I'm going to say it's the original. Re or, or re no. Okay, so uh, let's run this, just to show you how uh, it looks like. So that's that's the uh, original of the, um, the, the 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 matrix. All right. So um, this is the uh, matrix so far. Um, I'm going to maybe it's it's um, useful to use the color map gray. It would be I think I don't know. Um, yeah. So uh, this is the original now. All right, so let's start now with the algorithm of the PCA, okay? So the first step, um, I think we already done it, which is construct the data set. So here we have X. So this is step one. And now let's go to step two. So if you remember, step two is to compute, to compute the mean of all rows. So how to do this? I'm going to call it mn, which is the mean of all rows, which is the mean, sorry, the mean of x. Uh, two here means uh, um, take the mean of all rows, okay? All right, now this is the second step. If you remember, step number three was to uh, build the mean centered data set. So to do that, I'm gonna call it x equals to my x, minus the mean, so mn, but here I have to construct ones here, uh, a ones um, uh, vector, so the dimensions of these two uh, matrices would be uh, consistent. Um, all right, so this is step number three. Um, so step number four is, step number four is to build the covariance matrix. And if you remember, the covariance matrix, I'm gonna call it L here, uh, is my mean centered data set X times my mean centered data set X transpose. That's it. And that is my covariance matrix. Um, you can see that all the steps are just one line of code. All right. So we did uh, uh, the data set, we, we constructed the data set, and then we computed the mean, the mean centered data set, and then the covariance. And you remember the last step here, step five, is to um, uh, to find or diagonalize diagonalize the covariance matrix. So to do that, so let me go down. Um, to do that, uh, I'm gonna go to v. V is the eigenvalue, uh, eigenvector, sorry, and d is the eigenvalues. So I'm gonna call it d, and um, it's equal to. So the, the the command in MATLAB for diagonalizing any matrix is eig e i g of, a, of L, sorry. So I'm going to diagonalize the covariance matrix. All right, so doing this, um, um, everything is, is, is done. That's, that's pretty much all the algorithm of PCA. But now we need to, uh, we need to uh, explain actually uh, what these steps are. Let me make sure no, um, no complaints of the code and the code uh, is running properly as it should be. Um, still busy so uh, still busy okay while it's still running oh 
okay all right good so there is no complaints and everything is running uh, very good so if you remember d here which is the eigenvalues is a matrix that has uh, uh, m by m uh, uh, dimension so if you see here for example so this is d and you can see here that it has m by m uh, matrix which is in this case 4032 for 4032 okay now if you remember that this matrix is a diagonal matrix and we only want um, the diagonal elements because all of the uh, of diagonals are zero we don't need them so I'm going to say uh, to call uh, sorry I want to call another uh, uh, um, variable s and I want to extract all diagonal elements in this case and I'm going to call it s s is the diag of d that's the command in MATLAB to extract only the diagonal elements now um, a very uh, important note note here is that when you do this MATLAB will flip all of these diagonal elements so you need to flip them back in order to, to for you to show them in a decreasing way as they should be so I wrote a very simple code here to uh, to uh, to implement this very uh, easily which is to sort these uh, to sort this um, these elements in a decreasing order so um, you can sort use the command sort here um, by multiplying by minus one times s you can flip them uh, uh, flip all of the eigenvalues uh, in, in a way that they should be um, all right, so let's let's let, take a look at these eigenvalues actually. So figure. Uh, so I'm going to show you two figures actually. So uh, the first one, I want to plot these diagonals, and I want to um, divide by the sum of these diagonals just to, in a way that the y axis will be out of a hundred, or it will be a hundred percent, or will be out of one. Um, it would be easier to interpret. Uh, what I'm going to see so this is will be uh, let's say black circles here um, and then uh, I will take the x limit here just to make things easier 1550 and then uh, let's take another subplot and I want to show you 1 2 2 the cumulative cumulative uh, values or the cumulative energy of these values to do this I'm going to use the com sum of s divided by the sum of s all right and also here I'm going to use the black uh, circles um, the x limb here I'm going to use exactly the same thing 1550 um, and for the y, uh, maybe, I don't know, y limb, um, let's go for, from 0 to 1.1. 1, 1. 1. Okay, so let me run this just to show how this works. Oh, um, okay, so sorry, here we need the square bracket. Okay, now let's run this again. Um, and we should have some um, I think um, it should give us a couple of um, eigenvalues that are meaningful and the rest would be zero the ones that are meaningful they should uh, let me arrange oh sorry so this is arranged so this is copy and then paste okay sorry about this um, let's run this again Um, should be okay now so it takes it's, it's taking a bit of time because the, 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 the image is a bit large um, and this is one of the reasons why we should use the dimensional T reduction or for image compression and this is the way all the technological um, uh, devices does actually do actually so this is the figure that is the most important actually so the the one on the left is the eigenvalues and you can see that 
the first eigenvalue, it has like 34% of all the information about, of the system. And the second eigenvalue, it has 20%. The third one has like, I don't know, 13%. And um, one, two, three, four has um, seven percent. So these have, until here, I think, have uh, all of these have a considerable amount of information about the system. The rest are nearly zero. So this is the way how PCA works. All of these I don't really care about because all of these contribute nothing to the information about the system. We only need these. Uh, these uh, uh, eigenvalues, um, and that's why we truncate and 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 we call this feature space. We truncate these. We only keep these ones, and we ignore the rest. And you can see here that um, this is the cumulative energy. Um, so, for example, the first uh, eigenvalue has um, has an energy of thirty percent, and here, so until here, you have ninety percent of the system. Um, uh, just by taking all of these, you have ninety percent of the system, ninety percent energy of the system, and the rest are just nothing. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the figure of the eigenvalues, and it 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 it, it means a lot because um, it means that you can um, understand what's going on in your system. Uh, now I want to reconstruct the image. I want to reconstruct the compressed image, actually. Um, so to do this, um, we have two steps to go through. So the first one, we need to uh, um, calculate the score. We call it the score, so calculate the score, or we call it mode, or we call it rank, uh, uh, or we call it PC, prin principal component of the system. So all of these names are exactly the same thing. So I'm going to call it P principal components, which is PCs. Is um, so we we calculate this by projecting my x, which is the data the data set, the transpose of the data set on the eigen on the eigen vectors v. This is uh, so this is the first uh, step. The second step is to use this to co to reconstruct the compressed image. So how to do this. First of all, um, I'm going to say, okay, I have the plot uh, index here. I'm going to call it two. Uh, and this is just for plotting, actually. Um, and then I'm going to say four. Now I'm going to choose the truncation rank um, uh, of the system or the truncation value. So I'm going to say r equals, uh, I'm going to take only five eigenvalues. And, I'm get all, uh, and then I'm going to take 20 and then I'm going to take 100. And I want to see what would happen if I take 5, 20, 100. What would I get? What image will I, will I get uh, at the end? So to reconstruct this, I'm going to say it's x prox, which is the x approximate, approximated reconstructed image, image is can be calculated as following. So um, I'm going to say it's v, which is the eigenvectors, uh, for all the rows, just taking r columns. So from 1 to r, just from 1 to r, and then uh, uh, multiply it by my PCs. But also, these PCs will be exactly the same thing. Take all the rows, but for r columns only. And take the transpose here to make the, uh, the dimensions consistent, and then put back or add back the mean that I uh, um, that I subtracted from the beginning times so ones here one and y okay so this is how to reconstruct your um, your compressed image okay so um, let me call figure two back and then I will say hold on and then I have subplot two uh, two and then plot plot ing, uh, and then plot ing equals plot ing plus 1 to go to the next plot or to the next subplot, and then image of C of my, of my um, approx, um, so it's a pro, no, it's a x approx, um, yeah, it's my approximate image, and I think it's easier or better to get the absolute value of this image, actually. Okay, um, 
let's put the title here just, just to show um, the rank. So um, let's say here R equals, and then let's put the, 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 the value uh, num to string of R. Um, and let's close, oops, 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 oops. Um, so here and then here, I want to close the for loop. Okay, um, let's run and hopefully we don't have any errors here. And let's see how uh, the, this constructed approximated image looks like for different kinds or different sorry, numbers of truncated values. Um, so I think for for five rank, uh, for five eigenvalues we won't have very um, very sharp image. Um, we still have something looks like the original, but not quite well. Um, let's see. So this is figure two that we are aiming for. Okay, I suspected that. Okay, so sorry. Here we have num str just string. Okay, let's. Do that again. Hopefully, it's uh, no. Hopefully, there will be. I think here will it has to be square brackets. Hopefully, it won't complain about this. But yeah. Um, so the idea here is to. Um, so the reconstructed is to get first to get the score, um, or the mode or the rank, and then. Um, Hopefully it's working. Oh, okay, it's working. So this is, you can see here, this is the image for five eigenvalues only. Um, and if I take 20, okay, it's it's getting better. If I take, uh, if I take 100, and it's very similar actually to the original. So you only take 100 rather than taking 4,000. 24. So it's 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 a it's a, a very um, uh, um, very good. Um, you can see here it's very similar. You can't even you can hardly find the difference between both of them. For r equals to five, yeah, that's that's pretty much um, unrecognizable actually. For twenty, it's getting better, but for hundred, you you're only keeping a hundred out of four thousand, which is which is amazing. So so in this case, you are you have uh, compressed the image uh, successfully using a principal component analysis. And this is how you do it in MATLAB. If you have a different um, way or a different way of, of organizing steps, uh, please do let me know in the comments. I will share the GitHub uh, link that has the code that I used um, in, this, uh, in this video. You can use it, you can reuse it, you can recycle it. Um, I also have another image you can, uh, you can use as well for uh, Durham University Castle, actually. Um, and yeah, play with it. Um, this is everything for this video. Uh, hopefully it was helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.